Okay, good morning, church. That's choir calling music. All of you that will would love to lift your voice and song. Give glory and praise to him. Come on up. It's a whosoever choir. Whosoever will. Come up and take a seat. Let's help sing it today and sing it to his glory. Hey, good morning, church. How we doing? Good. Love to hear that. A um, couple things for you guys this morning to hit right off the top. Um, tonight at 6, our uh, worship service uh, is going to be happening. Student, our Superbook Academy is going to be meeting over there. We got dinner tonight at 515. Um, if you'll see in your bulletin, Joy Group on April the 9th, dinner and bingo. That sounds so fun. I might come to that. We'll see. Um, awesome. I, mean, I really will come to that. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, A couple things going on. First off, we just want to rejoice as a family this morning. I want to read a message in case you didn't get to see it this morning from Mary Ruth about our pastor. She writes this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We love and miss our church family today, but our love and prayers are with you. Walter had a good night's rest. He is improving and gaining a little strength every day. Dialysis and physical therapy are going well. His periontitis is getting better. Please continue to pray for complete healing. Thank you all for your prayers. God bless all of you. Um, and so we let her know together um, that our prayers are with you guys. We love you dearly and praying for complete healing. And, and folks, I hope you guys are seeing that prayer absolutely works. God hears um, the prayers of his people. God's heart is changed and moved by the prayers of his people. So we continue to pray because he is a God who desires to hear from us and we see action from our prayers. Um, Tonight, our students, uh, we're actually going to be meeting here back on church campus at 2 p.m. We're heading to the trampoline parks down in Kennesaw Adventure Air Sports. It's going to be a great time. We would love for your students to join us. Uh, Again, 2 p.m. cost for that is $20, but if if you can't pay that, it's totally fine to show up. Give me a little finger gun, and I'll know that's the signal. And we'll be throw them on the bus, and we'll be happy to go and take them with us. Um, Coming up very soon, Splash Gordon. Seems like it's weeks away, but as we kind of meet for that weekly and talk about that, Um, It it just kind of creeps up on us faster and faster. That's going to be July 29th um, through 30th is the early sign up for $50 or sorry, the early sign up is $50 through April 30th. After that, on May 1st, it goes up to 75. We would love to have you guys come and serve with us as we go out on mission in our community. Uh, You know, the, the great commission Jesus gives to his disciples is to go, therefore, into Jerusalem, Judea, and then the nations. We focus on the nations and forget about our Jerusalem and Judea sometimes. Um, that there are people here in our community that need the gospel just as much as other countries. Uh, but kind of piggybacking off of that, we have um, something really, really incredibly special this morning. Brother Gary Tate is going to be leaving soon to head to India on mission. And that is an example of the Great Commission there. How beautiful are the feet of those who carry the gospel. Uh, Romans tells us in, in chapter 10 that. Um, how are they going to believe if they have not heard, and how are they going to hear if it is not preached to them? So, Brother Gary, where are you at this morning? If you'll come up here this morning, we would love to pray for you and kind of send you off um, this morning. If some of the men from our church, some of the deacons want to kind of gather around as we pray for him this morning, I'll kind of lead us there, and then we'll stand after that and get started with our worship.
Church, pray with me. Father God, God, we come this morning and we know that you are sovereign over all things. God, that you are before all things. God, we know that Brother Gary is headed on divine appointment this morning. God, that, that we pray the people he comes in contact with are receptive to the gospel. God, he's going into a hostile environment full of darkness, satanic powers, polytheism. God, and we pray this morning that the gospel is proclaimed clearly and pierces the heart of the people he is going to meet. God, we pray that the, the word of Christ just reigns true. God, that biblical truth is just unleashed. God, we pray for safe travels. God, we pray that as the word is proclaimed, God, that it spreads like wildfire as it did in the early church. God, we know that you are good, and we know that you love those who preach the gospel. Father, we just pray for our brother this morning. God, as he goes, that you, are, that you go before him and lay the path, God. We love you and we praise you. It's all in the precious name of Christ that we pray. All God's people said? Amen. Amen, church. Let's worship. Thank you, Brother Bryce. Hey, is Bryce doing a pretty good job with these announcements? Yeah. By the way, his fiance Abby's here with us today. Abby, we're glad to have you. Let's stand, church, and visitors, everybody here. Page number 221 in your songs of faith. The words will be on the screen. Somebody loves me. I know who that is. Amen. <laughs> You know, the Bible says, the psalmist says, Great is our Lord. It's worthy to be praised. Sing it with us now.
Amen Church. We're glad to have our visitors here. If you're a visitor here with us for the first time, would you raise your hand this morning? Amen. Thank y'all for coming. We pray that you'll feel the spirit of the Lord, the Lord and the welcome warmth of worship today. We town we love our visitors. Today. Amen. I saw, I don't see him now, but I, I saw Johnny McBrayer. Is he still back here? Johnny McBrayer, we can't see him. He's sitting there. He is. He stood up. That's, the battle. That's a great job that got Johnny McBrayer back with us this morning. He had a very serious, risky surgery and uh, has had several weeks in the hospital. And we thank the Lord for that. Church, I won't keep you standing much longer, but I want to tell you that uh, I had a conversation with Brother Walter this morning. Nevin had already talked to him and told me how up he was. And then he called me about five minutes before Sunday school. And uh, I had visited him twice this week. And, and Brother Jonathan, I didn't even, he didn't even remember. He was sleeping so much and had some tough nights. And this morning, he was so wound up. I said, Brother Hare, I said, I hadn't heard you like this in a long, long time. He said, well, I hadn't felt like this in a long, long time. <laughs> he started naming groups. He said, tell this one I love them. Tell that one I love them. Tell this church I love them. The Sunday school classes, the youth, Bryce, you and the youth, Daniel, uh, everyone, he said, to tell them, to tell them that I love them today, and my heart is with them today, and I love to be there in worship, and uh, I just want you to give the Lord another hand clap of praise. For all you. Amen. And Brother Eddie Brandon, where are you at? He said, you tell Brother Eddie Brandon to just pour it on him. <laughs> got the leeway both from the Lord and him to do that. So let's just continue to worship the Lord today. You can be seated. I want you to keep singing with us. The, the psalmist said that he is my rock, he's my fortress, and he's my tower. I'm glad that we're standing on the solid rock choir that's on page number 456. <laughs> Church and choir. One other thing, Brother Walter 
said this morning, he said, uh, well, he had actually already told Debbie, he told me, he said, Jeff, if possible, sing It Is Well With My Soul this morning. Mm -hmm. And we're going to sing that. And a lot of you know the story behind that. I won't go into it, but Brother Walter told it. And he said, mm -hmm. uh, he said, you know, I was at the gates of death. And he said, the Lord said, not now. But you know, even if he had passed through, as much as it would have hurt us, it would have been okay with Brother Walter. Because he's made everything okay with the Lord a long, long, long ago. And I hope it's well with your soul today. But if it's not, I pray that you'll respond to the Word of God. Come to one of these altars and give your heart to the Lord today. And you can do it while we're singing. At any time during this service, I promise you somebody will come down and pray with you and take the Word of God. And show you how to turn your heart over to Jesus and receive Him as your Lord. Let's sing it together and let's lift the roof, okay? All right.
amen. We're glad to have Eli back from school. Eli had a little surgery this week, and the Lord brought him through it, so we're thankful for that. And uh, he and Morgan are going to sing this song. I told Brother Walter, I said, uh, Eli, he asked me about Eli and his surgery. He said, e I told him Eli and Morgan were going to sing in the garden. And, oh, he just started again then. And he started talking about in the garden, and he said, you know, he said, when I was well enough, I'd go to the rest home um, every week. And he said, there was this one little senior lady that would always ask me to play and sing in the garden. And I said, well, Brother Walter, I said, right there in that hospital room where you and Mary Ruth are, I just pray that as they're doing this today, that you, you'll just be able to go into the garden of your mind where you're walking and talking with the Lord. You know, we can do that anywhere. You know, the writer, this this author of this song talks about his garden, but, you know, your, may, your place may be your garden, your back deck, uh, one, a room in your house, your automobile. Just where, aren't you thankful that wherever we are, we could just get along with God? Amen. Amen. And he lets us know that we're his own. And all our problems, all our troubles that he cares about, and he ministers joy in our heart. You know, joy is that calm delight that only a Christian knows true joy. So he said, Eli Morgan, he said, first dedicate it to the Lord. He said, then dedicate it to me. Y'all sing it here for us. I come to the garden alone while the day the Lord's with us no matter where we are. If we're in our garden, in a time of trouble, time of distress, he's there. I'm glad of that this morning. Well, it's a joy to have Brother Eddie Brandon and his wife Lynn with us this morning, and I don't have to tell most of you. Most of you know Eddie grew up in this church, and so Eddie, you're at home this morning, and let's give Brother Eddie a good new town welcome. <laughs> this Thank you, brother. Well, I'll tell you. I feel like I've been to church. And I'm glad to have that feeling that I've been to church. When Bryce is up here making the announcements and all the excitement that's going on with our youth and their kids here. And, and then the gospel's been presented to us through song. The message already has been preached. But uh, if I don't get in the Lord's way, uh, I believe he has some more for us this morning. From his word, and if you have a copy of the word of God, I'm going to ask you to turn to the gospel as recorded by Luke, St. Luke, 
chapter 19. We'll take our text from there. And uh, I was thinking when the Lord was really feeding me off of this passage, I was thinking about L.C. and Loretta when I was out here as a young boy, how they taught us the song Zacchaeus. He was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in that sycamore tree for Jesus. He wanted to see. But you know what? Jesus saw him. Jesus sees you. He sees me. He sees us where we are. Let's just honor him this morning as we're standing and as we read the word of God from Luke chapter 19 beginning in verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. And he could not for the press because he was little of stature. And he ran before and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, listen to this, he looked up. He looked up and he saw him. And he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and he came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be the guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Father, we just want to thank you this morning, God, in advance for what you're going to do and what you've already done. And Father, we feel like a wee little man standing here, God, and uh, standing before you. And Lord, we're nothing without your fresh anointing this morning. Father, I just pray that as I've already prayed this morning, Father, if there's anything, God, in me that's going to hinder you working, Father, I pray that you'll take it right now. Father, forgive us of our sins, which are many. Create in us a heart that's clean and pure that we might hear from you today and you only. Oh, Lord, I'm nothing without you. And, God, I'm just trusting in you today, Lord, to feed the sheep. Use me. But, Father, you're the feed. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. <coughs> Amen. Thank you for the water this morning. This pollen's got me all <laughs> chugged up, and I know it has you too, but um, I've been looking forward to just being back out here with uh, my family uh, because I've always looked at Newtown as part of my family. I feel comfortable when I come here, and... Um, and seeing uh, those that were here, I mean, our pianist, she's been serving the Lord behind that piano yeah. when I was here, and I'm older than she is, but thank you, Amelia, for being faithful to God. Amen. Thank you. It just blesses my heart to see somebody stay with the stuff. Amen. Yeah. To stay with the stuff. Well, you know, we look at this passage this morning, and uh, I was telling someone here, I feel like I was preparing for a children's sermon, but you know what, that's what it's always related to a lot of times, the story of Zacchaeus is a children's sermon, but you know what, we're just children, we're just older children. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, we're just older kids, those of us who are in the limelight of retirement or whatever, we're just older kids, that's all, that's all. But you know, we look at this passage and we, we sense Jesus, we sense how he was always looking for someone to minister to, to make a difference in their life. This time the news had done already reached the area there where Zacchaeus was and 
Jericho and Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was a publican. And you know, when I, every time I read this passage or think about Zacchaeus, I just see a, a little bitty short round guy with suspenders on, you know, but I know they probably didn't have suspenders back then, but I can just see him scooting up that sycamore tree. And, uh, and you know, I just try to picture him for who he was. But uh, the Bible tells us that he was a tax collector. He collected taxes for the Roman government there in the area which he was assigned to and which he lived and his cooperation with the, the Roman people, the Roman army, uh, he was profiteering at the expense of those in his community. He was collecting taxes for the Roman government, but he's adding a little bit for himself. Publicans and tax collectors in that day were hated. They were hated, they were outcast in the community. Now you think about Zacchaeus. You think about, he probably didn't get out a whole lot. I'm just assuming this now because nobody liked him. He had no friends probably. It doesn't say that, but I'm just telling you that nobody liked him. He was hated by those in his community. And one day it became known there, word had traveled that Jesus was going to be passing through that area. Now I don't know if Zacchaeus had seen Jesus before. I don't know if he had been anywhere where Jesus had been. I don't know if Jesus had saw him before. But one thing, Zacchaeus, he was curious. Here was this man that was going to be coming through there that was one of the most famous men at that time, Jesus. But he was more than that. He, uh, a lot of people looked at him as the miracle worker, and that's what made him real popular among those uh, uh, that heard about him coming. And, and Zacchaeus was curious. And he, there, he, there he was, a little short guy with his suspenders on, and he's afraid he's going to get stepped on or, or trampled over because it was a crowd. There was probably a crowd approaching the city with Jesus. Wherever Jesus went, there was a crowd. And, and the crowd was there in Jericho ready to, to see Jesus as he passed by. And so what did Zacchaeus do? Well, he saw that old sycamore tree and... I'm allergic to the leaves off of a sycamore tree. I hate a sycamore tree, all right? You may, they're beautiful. I mean, they make good shade. But boy, they just do something to me. I can't be around them. But Zacchaeus, evidently, he, he, he had no problem. He said he scooted up that sycamore tree and to where he could see. So I can just see him perched up there, can't you? Can't you just picture it in your mind, him just perched up there above the crowd? waiting for Jesus to come through. He probably had a great view of Jesus coming from a distance. I don't know, but anyway, he wanted to be sure to see Jesus for who he was. Zacchaeus had heard that he was coming, and uh, he had even heard that it was considered by some that he was the son of God. So, man, he was curious. But always remember, what he did, he was a tax collector, profited, for his own self, that he was hated by the community. But you know what? Suddenly, when Jesus come through, everything was fixed and changed. Zacchaeus' life was fixing to change. You know, I believe a lot of times when we're praying for a family member or a neighbor or someone to you know, to come to Christ, that we don't know if they've been saved or not, or we may know that they've never made a profession. Sometimes I believe when we're praying for them, God begins to prepare their heart. And he begins to prepare, prepare their heart for whoever might come and share the gospel or whatever song they might hear. But I believe Zacchaeus' heart was already being prepared. I mean, he was anxious. He was ready. He was ready to go up that tree and uh, to watch for Jesus to come and who was Jesus? Well, he was a friend of sinners. We know that, don't we? Thank God he was our friend. Amen. He was our friend. Still our friend. His eyes was constantly open to the needs of the people around him. I mean, not just the needs of people like Zacchaeus, but the needs of everyone. That's how concerned he was. He loved people. So, you know, his ministry was intended to be a blessing not only to the good people and the innocent people, but to people like Zacchaeus, who everybody hated. What a Savior. What a Savior. 
I mean, think of us. There's many of us today that would have been missed if Jesus was just looking for certain people. We'd have been passed over. We'd have been missed. But thank God he looked at me one day. And you know, that's the first thing I want, I want us to understand. Zacchaeus thought, when Jesus looked up there in that tree, Zacchaeus thought, he sees me. <laughs> Can't you just picture him? Can't you? Get, getting a little excited probably. He sees me. He sees me. Never had Zacchaeus, in reading this passage and commentaries about this passage, never had he been or felt so conspicuous as he did when Jesus lifted up those penetrating eyes and focused on him. Above everybody else, above the crowds that were there, the people that had been following him, the people that were gathered, he looked up at Zacchaeus. Now, that didn't catch him by surprise that Zacchaeus was in that tree. <laughs> no. See, he's all-knowing. He's all-knowing. And, and, but Zacchaeus said, he, he sees me. He was shocked and he was embarrassed and probably he wished he could just for a moment just disappear. He didn't know what to do because Jesus saw him. Did it ever occur to you the time leading up to your salvation that Jesus saw you? He saw me. Where we were. What we were doing. What we were thinking. Did it ever occur to you? Well, this simple little story right here really just made it occur to me freshly. It, it really does. And, you know, he sees us right now where we are. But what I don't know, I'd rather be seen in the house of God with the people of God than be seen anywhere. I'm glad that Jesus knows where I'm at this morning. He knows where you're at. He sees you. He really does. And, and, and he sees the the secret unspoken thoughts in your mind also. He sees us for who we are. Sometimes we may be able to put on a good front, but let's be reminded that Jesus sees us where we are and for what we are. I send my grandchildren a text about every other morning. I don't want it to become old hat to them, but before they get ready to go to school, somebody sent me a picture of Jesus in his penetrating eyes. And they get that same picture every other day, and it's, I say, he's watching you. <laughs> I like to give them a blessing real early in the morning. <laughs> and sometimes it's in the middle of the day. Uh, but just a picture of Jesus and those penetrating eyes. He's watching you. I'm thankful for whoever sent that to me, but I about wore it out. But you know what? Jesus sees the emotions that surge through our heart. Zacchaeus said he sees me. Don't forget that. Jesus sees us. Second thing I think Zacchaeus thought, that he thought was, he knows me. I believe he got a little excited. How did Zacchaeus know that he knew him? Because Jesus called his name. Jesus knows our name. Isn't it amazing what he knows about us? I'm glad he knew my name, December 1985, and he knew my number. <laughs> he knew where I was. He wasn't pleased with where I was. He loved me too much to leave me there. <laughs> I'm glad that, that he saw me. I'm glad that, that he knows me. But as Jesus looked up and saw Zacchaeus, he called him by name and said, Zacchaeus. Make haste, hurry up, come quickly, make haste. For today, I'm going to go to your house. He said more than that, he said, I'm going to abide, I'm going to stay at your house. What about that? You know, it, as I said earlier, it could be that they had met before. I, I have no idea. Uh, it could be that Zacchaeus maybe attended a, uh, a banquet there at, uh, when uh, following Matthew's conversion and he may have saw Jesus there. I don't know. It's possible that he may have been on the scene of other times at Jesus where he was at. and I don't know, but Jesus had, 
had saw him, had looked at him, and called his name. Did it ever occur to you how much he knows about you? Man, I'm going to tell you why. Before he formed us in our mother's womb, I believe the scripture is very specific that he had a plan for us. He had a plan. Amen. I believe that. Some people may never discover the plan that God has for them or for you because you've never got to where you've really met God and come to know the Lord. And you want to be in his will and you want to seek him. And you want, you know, I'm going to tell you, he knows what's best for you. But he can't use you until you align with him. He couldn't use any of those that left their jobs, left what they were doing to follow him until they were willing to do it. And he had to keep reminding them about that. But you know what? I'm thankful that, uh, that he knows exactly what's on my heart and mind right now. Right now. But you know what? Have you ever been praying? Sometimes it's hard to pray. Amen? Really? I mean, we're, we're all got a lot of baggage from time to time. It's just hard to pray. Sometimes it's easier. And sometimes it's just easy. But I'm going to tell you what, there's times when I am trying to talk with the Lord that uh, before I know it, my mind's done off on something else. Have you ever been there? You can't think, what am I doing over here? What am I thinking about this for? Well, that's the devil trying to distract us. But you know what? The Lord loves you. If you're here today and you've never been saved, as they said earlier, today is the day. A great opportunity that you may never get again. So if the Lord's tugging at your heart, helping you to understand that you're a sinner in need of a Savior, and you know you're carrying some baggage, he wants to take that baggage away from you today. I will, he'd want me to tell you today, he sees you. And he knows you. But what else? I believe Zacchaeus thought, after Jesus saw him and after Jesus called his name, I believe Zacchaeus thought, he loves me. Zacchaeus, now think about it, he wasn't loved. As I said earlier, he was hated by just about everybody in his community. But Zacchaeus thought, he loves me. Most of the people in Jericho hated Zacchaeus, but Zacchaeus thought, he loves me. <laughs> he saw me. He called my name. He knows who I am. He has to love me. He does. He does. You know, Zacchaeus, probably there wouldn't anybody want to walk down the street with him. You think about this where he was at. I wrote down just a few things. Wouldn't anybody wanted to walk down the street with him? They treated him as a traitor to his country, and he could see the hate in their eyes on their faces. But what a difference he saw in Jesus' eyes and on Jesus' face. He saw something that he just hadn't seen before. He saw, he said, that's how, I believe that's why he thought, Jesus, he, he loves me. He loves me. And you know what? He'll always love you. He doesn't quit. Whether you yield to him or not, he always loves you. He never quits. He loves you. He loves you. He knows your name. He sees you. What a Savior. What a Savior. And here was another thought. Gee, I believe Zach is probably thinking. Not only did he see him, and not only did he know his name, and not only did he love him, but Zacchaeus felt wanted for the first time probably in a long time. I believe Zacchaeus was thinking, he wants me. He wants me. He's called me to come down out of this tree. He wants me. And Zacchaeus was rushing down with great haste and, and joy, and he led Jesus to his house. Well, you can just hear the murmuring going on among the people. A 
about Jesus, about how he was a friend of sinners. Some of the righteous, self-righteous, couldn't understand that. But thank God, that's who Jesus was. And you know what? Uh, Zacchaeus probably found all of this hard to believe. You know where I'm coming from? Hard to believe. I, I mean, I thought about it. I thought about his condition. I thought about where he was in his life at that time, Zacchaeus. How an outcast that he was by, by those that he was collecting the taxes from. He, he probably just couldn't understand why Jesus saw him, why he looked at him. He couldn't understand why he called him out above everybody else that was there. He just couldn't get a grip on it, I don't believe. I couldn't have. And then he sought and felt the love of God. And then he understood, I'm wanted. God, Jesus wants me. Boy, isn't it good to feel needed and wanted? Jesus wants me. Well, here's what he decided. I believe his thoughts probably included this. He can have me. Listen. We all have to get to that point before anything else matters. We have to be willing to give ourselves to the Lord. With all of our baggage, with all of our bad vocabulary, <laughs> we gotta be willing to give ourselves to him before he'll ever be able to work in our life. You know what? A lot of people accept Christ as Savior as far as they get. I mean, it's great to be saved, but you know, there's far more in the journey ahead. Far more. He wants to be our Lord. Not just our Savior, but He wants to be our Lord. You know what? He was my Savior, brother, for about three years. And I was down there at first Atlanta on a fifth Sunday night when we didn't have church and Charles Stanley's 12 inch long finger was pointed right at me. He said it. Some of you have him as your Savior but you've never allowed him to be your Lord. And he said, what do we have to do to make Jesus our Lord? He said, we got to acknowledge that everything we have belongs to him. Everything. He said, we got to, we got to acknowledge and, and know that our family, our children, don't belong to us. They belong to him. And he went on to say something that I've heard several times since then. He said, you know what? If he's not Lord of all, everything, he's not Lord at all. It's so true. It's so true. Is he your Lord? Have you ever allowed him to be your Lord? Have you ever realized that whatever you put in Jesus is hands is you'll put it in the greatest hands that you can put it in. When I put my children in the hands of the Lord and left them there, I realized Jesus loved them more than it was possible for me to love them and that he could do more for them and with them than I could, that I needed to just get out of the way and give them to the Lord. Parents, have you ever done that? Are you still trying to fix everything? <laughs> you'll wire yourself out. You've got to realize that you put them in Jesus' hands and you've left them there. And listen, they're in the best hands they could be in. The best hands they could be in. That's, that's free there, a little extra, okay? But Zacchaeus decided, Lord, today salvation has come to my house. 
That's what Jesus said. He said, today salvation is going to come to thy house. I believe Zacchaeus thought he's come to my house. Salvation has come to my house. And then what happened? Zacchaeus was changed. He was changed. He determined from that point forward to live a life of honesty. Now think about this big change in him. To live a life of charity toward others. What had he been before this? He had been taken from others, profiting from others. But he made a decision. He was a different person. Jesus, when he comes into your heart and life, you're different. You'll never be the same. Never, 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 never be the same. Zacchaeus was never the same after he received salvation from the Lord. He was never the same. You know what? I think today, I think today it'd be good for us just to do spiritual inventory <laughs> and just evaluate ourselves. I mean, hey, we know who we are. Evaluate ourselves and ask ourselves, are we doing what the Lord would have us to do? I believe when the Lord is able to take over and, and live his life through you, you'll never, ever want to be anywhere else. I think it'd be wise today if all of us could just follow the example of Zacchaeus. A decision to let Jesus Christ have first place, third place, not second, first place in our life. I really believe that. Today would be a good day. It would be a good day. And I'm going to tell you one thing. You can be certain that Zacchaeus never regretted his decision. I've never regretted mine and never will. Never will. I just want to be more accessible and more usable by God. As I say, I feel like a wee little man, all 279 pound of me. I feel like a li wee little man when I'm standing serving him behind what I've referred to as the <coughs> sacred desk. And I appreciate this church affording me the opportunity to be here and trusting me enough to allow me to speak from this pulpit. But you know, I think that you might say, well, Eddie, I'm, you know what, I'm almost sure that I've been saved. Well, let me tell you this, if you're almost sure, if you're 99% sure, the devil's going to take that 1% and wear you out. Am I right? He's going to take that 1% and keep causing you doubt. You can't, you, got, you can't just be almost. You almost are sure. You're 99% sure. You need to be sure. Sometimes it takes just humbling ourselves and forgetting what others think or what they might think. See, the devil's got you thinking that if you're here today and you're considering <laughs> either taking your life and, and making a new, fresh commitment to the Lord that you know that you're saved, but you just know that you hadn't been living a life that he's been pleased with. If you're thinking about doing that this morning, well, I'm going to tell you, I know what's on your mind right now. The devil's got you thinking, what are people going to think? What are they going to think with me going down to you? Maybe a Sunday school teacher. I don't know. What, what are they going to think? I'm going to tell you what they're going to think. They're going to rejoice to the heavens with you. And by you moving, others might move. But what I'm concerned about today is what the Lord's concerned about. Where are you in your walk with the Lord? Where are you? Where are you in your walk with the Lord? Is the Lord pleased with you? 
or you still got some rough edges that you need to let the Lord buff off? I think we all do from time to time. Never be ashamed of making a new, fresh commitment. That's part of it. That's part of it. All of us get sideways from time to time, and we've got to come back. We know, we know, we know, the, we know the trail. We've got to come back. But if you just keep worrying what somebody's going to think, what you can't do it or you can't live it, well, I'm going to tell you why. Satan's got you exactly right where he wants you. The Lord still loves you. He sees you. He knows you. He wants you. <laughs> Will you let him have complete control of your life right now? Every half mouth and every eye closed as they come to get a hymn of invitation. Brother Charles Maxwell will be preaching for you tonight. You pray for him. You pray for the service tonight. But I want us right now to just, wherever you are during this invitation, you can stand, you can sit, whatever you feel comfortable doing. But I want you to be praying for the one on your left and the one on your right. And yourself, Lord, show me what would you have me to do. Father, minister to others. Lift our loved ones up before the Lord that we know is not on the right path. Bring them to Jesus. Put them in his hand. Don't try to tote them. Don't try to enable them. We all try that. We see it just don't work. You got to give them to Jesus. You may have someone on your heart right now that you've just tried to fix and tried to help. and You just, you just feel like you've just reached the avenue that you can't do anymore. Well, then it's time to give them to Jesus. Bring them to the altar this morning and put them in the hands of Jesus. It'll free you up. It will. A load will come off of you when you put them into Jesus' hand. I don't know the hearts and minds of people here today, but the Lord does. Just as he saw Zacchaeus, he sees you. Father, may your will and your will only be accomplished here this morning. Father, this is your invitation not mine it's your invitation to those that are here that you see that you know that you love that you want father let us do one thing today that all of us can do and we can do this just be obedient to you and obedient to the holy spirit who's working here in this place right now and let's allow the holy spirit to feel welcome here at new town during this invitation have your will and your way, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise and glory. For it's in your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Stand with us this morning, or you can keep your seat if you're unable to stand. While they sing a hymn of invitation, you come. I'll be down here at the front. Others will come pray with you. Whatever the need is, obey the Lord this morning. You may not have another chance. Obey him today. Just as I am.
I don't want you to leave here today if there's something that's undone in your life. Stay after the service. We'll pray for you. We'll meet with you. And I'm going to tell you what. I may not know your name this morning, but I love you. And God loves you. And I want what's best for you. And God certainly does. So just allow him to work in your heart and your life. Let him continue to. Thank you for being so attentive this morning. I, I'm grateful for that. Great singing. I tell you what, I feel good. I feel good. So I, any announcements before we unhook, unplug? Any announcements, guys? Remember the service tonight. Continue to pray for Brother Walden. Right? You got any more announcements? I think you made enough to start with. You was clear. You was precise. You was to the point. And that means you're busy. I'm glad to see what's going on here. I really am. And you know what? It's all God. Don't ever get to thinking it's you. No. It's all about him. We're not going to dismiss, just unplug, come back this evening. May God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you.